Okay, so some years ago I put these Mazda RX-8 full leather seats in the Defender and they're absolutely lush. It's quite a common uh, conversion, a lot of people do it and I can see why because they're really comfortable but the only disadvantage is that to get to the gubbins underneath which we all need to do from time to time you have to undo all these bolts two at the back and two at the front which in itself isn't a major issue but if you just want to get in there quickly to have a look at a fuse or check a relay it can be a pain in the backside so I'm going to alter that I've made these brackets they are made from 40 by 40 by 4 mil angle two pieces cut at 40 mil um, cut in half and then welded together to give me a 45 mil gap in between and that's just going to give me a nice little bit of play from the flat that I've used on the seat rails now these bits of tube are going to go in there they should do they did fit I'm sure they did anyway we'll sort that out they're going to go in there and that's going to basically be my hinge so what I'm going to do first of all I've got to mark where the holes have got to come and as you can see that hole there is quite a way off centre so I want to quite accurately mark that all by eye of course and the same this side mark where they come that one's much more in the centre alright so I've done that I'm having to do a lot of this off camera because it's difficult to get in with the camera now you can see the, how far off that right hand one is now also I've got a mark Ah, before I go for, for that you can see there's a piece been cut out there that wasn't me that was a previous owner because he put different seats in again and the seat rails came back through right through that gap um, but when I put these RX-8 ones in it didn't so don't worry about that you don't need to do that but I've got to measure this distance from that rail to the center obviously and mark that onto the bracket because I want that bracket to sit just up against that rail I'm just going to drill them out now I've marked them you can see just how far off to the right this one is and there was a reason that happened and it's because the cables for the electric seat came up and they were just in the way so I just had to move the, the whole thing over a little bit um, if I'd thought about it beforehand I wouldn't have done it that way I would have moved the cables but hey ho that is what it is now I'm putting an 8.8 .8 mil hole through so it's giving me 0.8 of a mil clearance it's just going to give me enough wiggle room so that if I my measurements aren't particularly accurate it hopefully will take up the uh, the slack I don't want to make them too big because I want them to sit quite nice and tight being that beings that it's only held down with one bolt so I'm just going to countersink we're well, not really countersink just going to take the um, burr off of the countersink of course you can't actually see what I'm doing because I haven't moved the camera there you go I'm just taking the edge off there you go right so next job just whip these bolts out these are quite long these are actually the original bolts they've got a small head a 10 mil head but they're actually 8 mil bolts they're sort of a flanged bolt and I don't know why they're so long they're really really long I don't won't be needing them so I've disconnected the electric seat I'm going to whip them out I'm going to just put something under the rail oh, I've also just loosened the front bolts just so I can lift that up and I'm just going to put there we go I'll put a, it's a rubber door stop 
you just put anything under there just so you can get the brackets under there without having to keep jacking it all up by hand. Alright, so I've put them in roughly in place and I'm going to bolt them down with some much shorter bolts. These ones, only 20mm ones. Get them in place so that they're nice and firm and then I can work out exactly where I've got to cut these rails. I want to have the metal attach at the front of the hinge. So I've got to cut it off. See they're nice and firm. I've got to cut it off um, flush with the front. So I've got to put the camera down and try and get my eye in and mark it with a with my pencil so that it comes to the front. And that will drop it down another six mil or more maybe 8mm, you can just about see where I've got to mark it. So let's do that and then we'll stick it in the workshop and cut it up. Okay so I've got my pencil marks, just going to whip the, those bits off really good old angle grinder. I've been meaning to do this job for months and months, well years, ever since I put them in I always said I was going to do it. Um, and now we're on this lockdown, it's given me a, a little chance to do it. I'm just taking the paint off and putting a little bit of a V on there so we can get a decent weld. Okay so I've got this set up, I've got a stand on the right there and a rasp sticking off the bench on the left. I've put the two um, hinges on a bit of bar just to try and keep them level and I've shimmed up the seat so that they should be right in the centre of that bar. So I'm going to tack them on now. Because again this is all sort of eyeballed. I haven't got any measurements sort of accurate other than what I've just taken you know where it gonna where it's gonna go so this might all go completely wrong but I'm hoping that I've eyeballed it accurately enough and it'll fit all right so now I'm gonna turn it over and do it on the other side first, or weld the other side first. Oh, schoolboy error. I forgot to put my ground clamp on. Because it's uh, all sitting on a towel so it doesn't damage the leather, so we've got no ground. It's going to make life so much easier for me because occasionally you really do need to just look under even if you want to get to the battery on the passenger side or the fuses on the driver's side so this I'm really looking forward to this so it's been one of those jobs that's been in the pipeline for forever I've never had enough enthusiasm at weekends to come in and do it let's say now with this lockdown I've been out shoeing all morning and I'm just going to do this this afternoon. Right, so I've tightened, I've, I've loosened the uh, nuts now, or the bolts there, so that those brackets have got a little bit of wiggle room. So I hopefully we'll drop the seat in, and if it's a little bit out, it all should line up. And it did. Those bolts went in a treat across there. So what I'm going to do before I tighten these back ones up here, I'm going to put the front ones in, make sure they go in properly. And they do, they go in a treat. Didn't have to do much wiggling at all. 
they're in. So now I can tighten the back ones up and then we can see if it works. All right, let's whip them out. Moment of truth. Come on, get it out there. Obviously I'd normally use my drill, but ah, that's catching on something. What the hell is that catching on? Ah, the seatbelt, where the reel of seatbelt webbing is. So, why is that doing that? Because I've already done the passenger side and it didn't do it on that one, which is what I'm just looking at. I think what it is, let's just, because this seat's electric, I've got to, it's, you know, you need to move it up and down with the buttons with the other one is manual you can just slide it in and out yeah oh, of course it's going to hit the steering wheel which for me actually isn't a problem but that's the way to do it you've got to if you've got an electric seat you've got to take it back lift it up and then slide it forward and it's a treat works a treat however if you've got a manual one Obviously, it's just a case of sliding it one way or the other as you lift it up past the steering wheel. But as you say, for me, it isn't a problem because the steering wheel comes off. So that's good. I'm pleased with that. Really, really pleased. So there you go. Drop it back. And you can get into all your gubbins. You've got big fuse box there, relays, all sorts of stuff that you do occasionally need to get to. And I haven't even had to undo the uh, electrics for the powered seat. And it all sits in there nicely. So yeah, I'm pleased with that. As I say, if you haven't got a steering wheel that comes off, it's just a case of wiggling the seat forward and backward or backward and forward as you lift it past the steering wheel. And then it misses the seat belt. So yeah, real chuffed with that. So let's take it all out again. Give it a coat of paint. So I just covered it everything as much as I can with a towel and a bit of a leather apron, a bit of primer, stick it out in the sun to dry, it's all dry now, back on the bench, a bit of black. I don't know how long, much longer these seats are going to be available for. But I guess once they've become obsolete, we'll have to find something else that fits a treat. But the Mazda R RX-8 ones going quite nicely. So there we go. It's all bolted down, back in. I do need to get the hoover in there. The front ones went in a treat. Didn't have to do much wiggling. Back ones, look at that, sits in there nicely. And it sits it up about 30 mil at the back, which is what I had to move it up anyway, which is what those spaces were, because you're tilting down way too much if you lay it down on the rails completely. So it's actually worked out very well. I'm going to change those bolts that go through the bracket for some stainless proper bolts. These are set screws, but I've ordered some set um, proper bolts in stainless with nylock nuts so I shall swap them when they arrive I like to put stainless in everything that I modify or change so there you go thanks for watching it's really made a hell of a difference to these really comfy seats